everybody. In this Swift 3D version 6 tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the program's interface along with toolbar, resizing, and docking. In tutorials coming later today and tomorrow, we'll discuss more in depth about many of the things that we'll just skim over in this interface tutorial. If you happen to be using previous versions of Swift 3D, the interface is very similar. Now, the default interface you get when you open the program is arranged the way the program creators feel it's best suited for good workflow but that doesn't mean you can't change things up to suit your specific creative needs which I will show you in just a second. Now first we have the main toolbar here and above the main toolbar you're gonna to find tabs which allow us to get to the main scene editor, extrusion editor, lathe editor, advanced modeler, preview and export window, and the web assistant where you can find all kind of technical support and tutorials and things of that nature. Now the next thing we have is the properties toolbar which is shown here on the very left of the program when you open it. The next thing we have is the animation toolbar which is this sitting right here which allows you to animate things in your scene. The next thing we have is the hierarchy toolbar. Next is the viewports. Now the next thing we have is the rotation trackball. So if I was to create an object and if I want to rotate that object in free rotate mode you can just use the rotation trackball makes it very easy and if you want to scale that item real quick you can go up here to scaling mode and you can just grab it alright so the next thing we have is the lighting trackball and all you have to do is grab a light like this rotate it around that ball any way you need it to be and you can see how it adjusts the reflections and the lighting on your objects in the scene and the next thing we have is the galleries toolbar which I'm going to be talking about all these toolbars a little bit more in depth in later tutorials and then finally we have the status bar which is on the very bottom and it will give you status and indication of what operations are being performed if any errors have occurred in any operations and things of that nature. Okay, now let's talk about resizing and docking these toolbars. Any of these toolbars can be resized or docked. So let's say if I wanted to let's maximize this viewport. Let's say if I wanted to move this up, you see what's going to happen? All of that's going to increase in size of that toolbar and the ones above it will decrease in size. The view panes, you see the view pane decrease and then that one increases. Same with left to right. You can slide these bars left and right to give any toolbar that you're focusing on more room to play with. Now you can undock all of these toolbars as well. So you just put your mouse inside of each toolbar and you'll see it gives you the move symbol on the mouse. If you happen to have dual screen on your computer, it's really handy and you can really maximize your your uh your viewport by undocking these windows. So you can take them right out of there. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw it onto my other screen. So now it's on my other monitor and I can maximize the viewport here by getting rid of all of these well not getting rid of them but just by putting them onto my other monitor and many many people have dual monitors nowadays on their computer so it might be something you're interested in take this one out and now the last one is the properties toolbar so you see there now I have a nice big viewport to work in that's just about full screen and we'll be talking about the viewports later on. And then just as easily as you took them out, you can pop them back into place. So that takes care of the interface and your toolbar resizing and docking. In the next lesson, we'll start discussing more in depth all of these toolbars and what they do and how to play around in the scene to make cool things.